Hello, everybody. This is Nathan Crane, founder of the Panacea Community and producing partner with Best of Raw in the Raw Living Expo. And thank you for joining us for another Raw Living interview. Today we have just a phenomenal lineup of people with us today. So it's going to be exciting, and we're going to really cover some uh, really incredible topics as well as you'll get to hear from our uh, basically panels and speakers uh, on the show today. We've got Marcus Rothkranz. We've got Michael Shields, and we've got Christina Carillo Bucaram with us, as well as Laura Fox, the visionary. And uh, kind of the theme that came to us today is really taking a look at our thoughts and our thought field, the energy that we're allowing into our life and into our mind, and how that also connects with raw food and bringing our thoughts and our emotions into balance with our eating and our overall health. So. I'm going to hand it over to you, Laura Fox, the visionary of this incredible, incredible event that is happening, and I'll let you introduce everybody else. Thank you so much, Nathan. Wow, this is an exciting show to have three such awesome rock stars together, and there's going to be so many more of us together, hundreds of us together at the Raw Living Expo in Sedona, February 22nd to 24th, and there still are, are tickets left, so please come on out and join us. It's just so much more fun when we get to be physically present together, and, you know, we like to create a party with a purpose, and that's what it's all about, so come on out and join the party. And in the meantime here, I'm really honored honored and delighted that Michael Shields, our music director of the Raw Living Expo, is coming out. And Michael is also the creator of a band called Earth and the Next Society. And when he and I started talking, he's actually the inspiration who helped me make a decision to continue expanding Best of Raw to the next level and is really, you know, responsible for, for ensuring that this is happening this year. So I really want to thank Michael a lot. And you can check him out at Earth and the Next Society um, on Facebook and also at earthsnextmusic.com. And we'll be hearing more from him and what he's up to and he's going to be performing with his band at the Expo. And then, of course, we have Marcus Rothkrantz, who you all – probably know and have heard of and been a fan of for years. Marcus is one of the most dedicated, focused, driven raw food teachers who's out there massively making a difference in the world. He's just come from a tour in Germany where his publicity records are just off the charts. He's He's been called like the, the, the major, um, he's the one who gets the most views on the German television, you know, the ratings guru basically. And so he'll be able to tell you more about that very soon. And of course we have Christina, Fully Raw Christina with us who is going to be one of our main goddesses at the helm of the Raw Living Expo stage. She'll be one of our MCs. You'll see her in several different programs. And she, of course, if you've ever gone to her website, fullyraw.com, you'll see that the media and the way that she puts out the message of adding more raw organic plant foods to the diet in her fruitarian lifestyle is just really, truly impeccable. We're all very impressed with how she's showing up in the world. She also has the largest food co-op, produce co-op, I think, in the country, and she can correct me if I'm wrong later, uh, in Houston, and is really modeling that for all of us. So welcome to the show, guys. I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So maybe let's get started. Just who's feeling most inspired to sort of uh, share a little bit about what you're up to in your work in the world and also what you're going to be doing at the Expo. Maybe just take a few moments each to update everybody and then we'll get the conversation rolling. Would you like to go first, Christina? Sure, why not? I will totally start. I am just want to say thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited for this event because I think it's it's truly a once in a lifetime opportunity for so many of us to come together. And we all live in different places and everybody sees all of us online, whether it may be on our YouTube videos or on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever social media, everybody gets to interact with us via all of these portals. However, we're never all physically in one place at the same time. And I think that that united sense of spirit and having us all there creates truly a magical energy just for everybody. And I think that that will make this event absolutely unforgettable. So, Laura, I want to thank you and Nate and everybody for putting it together because we are going to have the best time ever. Yes, we are. And I, um, I'm so excited. I will be helping to MC at the event, which means I'll be helping to introduce people. I'll also be doing um, a keynote presentation on basically what it means to be fully raw, 
be talking a little bit about like my vegetarian diet and my co-op and everything that will be going on in my life as well. Um, I'll also be doing like a minor chef demo of just making like a really simple salad. I think I'll probably be making like my holiday salad and maybe another. And just sharing fruit. And I think you got me teamed up with Dan McDonald that day. So I'm so excited. We're just going to be having like peace, fruit, love, and veggie time over there. <laughs> And I think that will be, I think that will be phenomenal. So, yes. So the, um, yes. You'll also do a discussion group at the cafe stage about the whole co-op model. Yes, yet. absolutely. And that's, I mean, you had asked what's going on with a lot of us here. I mean, obviously I keep busy and I love making videos for people and recipes, but what most people don't know is that I spend most of my time here in Houston running my co-op Roughly Organic, which is how I pretty much got started in the raw movement. Um, because I was hyperglycemic eight years ago, that's how I adapted a raw foods lifestyle. And from there, um, I ended up starting a co-op in my garage with just 12 people. And um, here I am seven years later in Houston, and it's a multi-million dollar nonprofit. We have over 7,500 members, and we feed about 500 families a week. To this day, it's still 100% nonprofit. I do most of the organizational numbers, math skills, all that, but um, we support about six local farmers full time just in the Houston city area limits. And um, it's pretty phenomenal. We just get the most abundant produce ever, and I love spending my days there. So every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I am there meeting people, handing out boxes, and it's that's pretty much what keeps me busy in between making recipes and um, doing everything else. So I just, I absolutely love that right now. That's what I've been up to. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I don't know if that answers your question, but I went first. Who's yeah, going next? <laughs> yeah, who wants to go next? Marcus? Um, okay. <laughs> You, you're still weary. You're road weary, I think. Yeah, uh, you've been traveling a bit lately. I literally didn't sleep last night. Um, wow, it's been nonstop, um, I, and that's kind of I think the theme for everybody. I, um, there, I kind of went from the raw food guy to the new world midwife role, I guess. <laughs> um, food, food is such a I mean, it's important. It's part of what we are. Makes us what we are. It's a, but it's just a little form of energy, and really, what we are. Real health is the whole picture. It's it's everything. It's it's uh, it's our thoughts. It's our relationships. It's our purpose. It's everything. And um, last year was the year of getting rid of things, letting go, um, and that's hard. That's hard for a lot of people. And um, and this is the year where the new power is coming in and I'm kind of this is a real <clears throat> transitional scary moment in a lot of people's lives where they're letting go of what they're comfortable with and almost being forced into a new way of living and so what I'm here to do is to kinda take their hand and say let's all go through this together and um, let me give you a little bit of light and um, I don't really know the right words for it right now but it'll be a pretty good talk let's just say that uh, I'm, <laughs> this is what people need more than anything because really the longest living people barely eat so there's more to life than just what goes in your mouth it's it's uh, it's about having a purpose in life and knowing what you're here for and um, really making a difference and most people have no clue why they're here. So let me help a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. That's that's perfect. And that's what we want to uh, definitely hold space for everybody at, at this expo. That's a big part of what it's what it's all about, is helping us all activate into the next level of what we're here to offer and do on the planet and giving us, each of us, permission, every single person, that permission to, yes, it's okay to bust through the old paradigm stuff and to move into who you really are. Yeah. 
It's it's a new world for sure, and in one way or another, we're going into it if we want to or not. We can be kicking and screaming, or we could lubricate and slide through. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you said is is absolutely beautiful and absolutely true, and I'm around a lot of people just at co-op, and I will say I've never seen such an openness and a willingness for people to try something new. I think now more than ever. I mean, maybe vegan eight years ago would have been totally taboo, but now the term is becoming a little bit more accepted. People are seeing that what they're doing isn't working, and they're willing to shift or at least just to listen. And I think that is so powerful in and of itself. And Marcus, I think this is going to be an amazing year for getting the word out and for this community. Um, I think people are finally starting to open their hearts to it, and I think that right in of itself is amazing. It's not just this community. It's it's really. I mean, we don't have to sell or preach to the choir. It's the other ninety percent of the people that really need some oh, kind yeah. of. They, they they need they need proof that it works. They need some kind of role model. They need something tangible because everybody out there is offering uh, something. Um, but most people, there's so many choices nowadays that people don't know really where to turn because there's so many people vying for their attention and their money and, and everything and their sanity. So um, it's our role to be living proof that the other side of the river is, is fine, you know. <laughs> Absolutely agree. That's nice, yeah. It's kind of interesting when 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 I was in Germany just now, one of the I mean I was on this talk show and they pitted me against these doctors and the, the old school thinking, and one of them threw the same thing at me that I'm sure a lot of other people get. They say, well, you know, you're talking about changing your life and this is how you you do. And it sounds like a that sounds like a religion to me, and I'm not into religion or anything. And <coughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't really have time to respond, but. My answer to that is so simple. I mean, somebody else posted it on Facebook, and it's perfect. It's like, well, I guess that means, you know, all I'm really promoting is to live the way nature intended. So that means that every other living being creature on the planet that is living according to nature is following a religion, right? <laughs> I mean, all we're trying to do is really just get people back to where it all started, right? I mean, it's just this is the way... The, the, the only way to really be healthy and happy and, and, and um, at peace is to be the way we're designed to be. It's that simple. And there is no, this isn't like some metaphysical hippie movement. This is, this is just getting back to the way we're supposed to be. This is the way we're designed. And the more closer you get to that design, the less the smoother everything runs, the way the more everything just comes together perfectly and works. It, isn't it funny that how this journey that we embark upon in most of our lives, it's like when we come to that consciousness of understanding exactly what you're talking about, it's like all of the, all of the <laughs> challenges and everything that we went through to get there, to come back to this simplistic understanding of, of really getting back in touch with our true selves and in harmony with nature, it's like it, it makes it seem like all of this other stuff that we learn from being a child and growing all the way up through, from our peers and our parents and from whatever society, that all of that is like, you know, a, a great way to keep us confused. And, and it's so amazing how simple it all seems, though in most people's lives it's very difficult. It's very challenging to come to that consciousness, that simplistic consciousness that you're talking about, which is truly being in harmony with nature. Yeah, and everybody goes, ah, it can't be that simple. <laughs> we, we, we live in a complicated world. Everything is technology. Everything is complex, so therefore the answer must be complex. And if it's simple, then it, it, there's got to be more to it than that. You know? <laughs> right, right. And, and I love what you said, too, is that, you know, this event obviously is about supporting the community, the raw foods community, but beyond that, everybody who's coming to this event, it's about, you know, you influencing your spouse or your loved ones or your friends to also open up to other possibilities of complete health. And I think that's what is beautiful about, you know, the, the expo, the raw living expo, is that 
it's it's not like an exclusive event only for certain people who are eating 100% raw or something like that. It's an all encompassing event that that is really about inviting everybody from anywhere in the world from anywhere they are in their life. Basically, Laura says it best. Laura, maybe you want to share kind of the the vision in the in your three in your simple sentence that you like to share. Yeah. So Raw Living Expo and Best of Raw. <clears throat> our mission is to um, invite people to add more raw organic plant foods to the diet to increase health, decrease our eco footprint, and raise our spirits. And that opening statement, you know, nobody can argue with. Oh yeah, adding more raw organic plant foods to the diet. That's a good idea. You know, I know that's probably something I should do. And then that's a conversation starter and, and the awareness that it's about sustainability because people don't really think all the time food and sustainability. What do you mean? It's like, oh, wait a second. The soil quality from organic food is improved. You know, there's not as many pesticides going into the water stream polluting it, you know, and, and we're not as using as much packaging. If you go out to the back and get some tree, you're really amplifying all the systems to get you your but again, it is really, really simple, like you said, Marcus. <laughs> so, Mike, Michael, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with your passion. I know that all this conversation so far, and you're just nodding in your head going, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Share a little bit about Earth and Next Society and what you're going to be doing. And yeah, what's passionate. I, can, I can certainly echo um, many of the comments that uh, Marcus has made uh, with regard to the midwifery thing and so forth. And Earth in the Next Society actually represents a platform uh, for which that can happen. And effectively what we do aside from producing music and uh, inspiring people to, and empowering them to find their path is we get involved in a lot of projects, one of which is this, this event and others. You know, so we're focused on doing some fairly broad things as well aside from simply the food. There, there are situations where we're looking to grow the modality of cooperative business, for example. You know, so Earth in the Next Society really represents a platform uh, for Next Society development uh, as well. And the music is just simply uh, a vehicle and a mechanism for us to make that happen. So, so obviously I'm in, involved in some of those kinds of things and I'm also uh, involved in producing music. Um, I'm in my studio here, we're working on our next album and so forth, um, which will be debuting some of the music at the event as well. And you know, some of the other things that were mentioned along the way in this conversation to point um, that um, resonate with me. Uh, being, you know, the, the, the shift in consciousness and, and finding a modality that really embraces simplicity um, is a real profound point. You know, if you look at the, the way, the, the analogy that the Hopi used to describe this, it's, it's as if we're moving down a river, and if we, if we reside down the center of the river, we move very cleanly and smoothly into the reality that we're intending to live in, whereas if we're gripping the sides and we're living in fear and we're struggling through that process, that journey is far more difficult. It's not going to happen nearly as easily. So it is really an understanding that there is a reintroduction of a natural order and simplicity into lifestyle. There, there's no question about that. But it's where, you know, where do you get that information? Where do you find the mechanisms within a modern society to actually educate people to do that, where they find complexity and convolution is breaking away from an artificial reality that's been created for them. So, you know, there's, a, there's really a lot of information out there in the indigenous world that represents a prime example of how you can live in harmony uh, with, with the planet, you know. So, when we talk in terms of creation and we talk in terms of finding a new path and creating a next society consciousness, the reality is, is that creation using the golden mean, and in this case, if you use the Fibonacci sequence as an example of whole numbers representing mm -hmm. the mean, you have effectively an indigenous consciousness and a modern consciousness that are both required to create the next level consciousness. And the things that the indigenous consciousness bring to the table are the understanding of, of the balance that's required to live in the natural order. And there are elements of the modern intelligence that are required as well. But this is what a lot of people need to understand that they're not going to find their solutions 
through many of the mechanisms that the modern world offers, they really have to recreate and find a natural order and balance. So, yeah, we all agree. It's um, simple, back to nature, and uh, complexity has to do with releasing all the complexity, <laughs> the complexity of our challenges to release the complexity so that we can live in harmony on the planet again. <laughs> and sure, you know, food is a big part of that. It's an intrinsic requirement. And for a lot of people, it's a strong activation point because it essentially brings continuity to their temple so that they can look outward into the world and determine what their purpose and intention is uh, without being laden with all of the toxicities and things that essentially are dragging most of the people down. So finding a path to health is a real key thing in terms of understanding who you are and finding your purpose and intention. And, and what's interesting about that is you know, tying this into our, our thought patterns and how we think throughout the day is that our food is directly related to the thought particles that we attract into our mind. And what I mean by that is obviously we, and science can show us that, you know, we're basically large walking magnets and we attract <coughs> ourselves to things and things to ourselves mostly through thought particles. But basically the heavier of the food that we eat, the, the more dense it is in terms of, you know, nutrient deficient and um, you know, the more complex and more change that it's become than pesticide filling and, and dense type of heavy food where, you know, after you finish eating, it's like you just want to go pass out. Like after, uh, you know, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner or something or a big hamburger or whatever, the more dense food that we eat, the more dense thought particles that we attract. And so you see this interconnectedness between people who eat very heavy types of food, not only do their bodies become very heavy over time, but their thoughts become very heavy, very negative, very pessimistic, angry, sad, depressed. And so there's this interconnection between obviously the food that we eat and the thoughts that we think. And would love to kind of direct that conversation to maybe each one of you and, and get your viewpoint on that as well. Maybe Christina, we could we could start with you again if if you like. I would love to. I I definitely love what Michael said about, you know, it's food is an intrinsic part of it. And I truly believe that, I mean, no matter what turns people on to their awakening, there's always a trigger point. And consequently, for many people, a lot of the time, this could be food. And I truly believe that food is definitely one of those soul shifters out there because when you walk outside into a garden, Garden of Eden, whatever it may be, the things that are the most colorful in that garden are the actual fruits, the greens, the vegetables. So in regards to speaking about a shift in energy, a shift of thinking, you know, eating that beautiful rainbow, in fact, will affect our total spirit, you know, whether or not it's like a chakra shift or a mental shift. There is something that is just absolutely powerful about eating beautiful foods. And just like you said, when you eat heavy foods, you feel heavy. Maybe perhaps it is that when you eat beautiful foods that you also radiate beauty within and that your body naturally goes to that place. And I, I absolutely love that. And it just like it totally realigns you, it affects you. And I think that for many people, they're just scared to take those few steps. And I get asked all the time, well, like, how do you eat an apple? What do you do with your peaches? And I'm sitting there, I'm like, all you do is bite into it. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not that they don't know how. It's more or less that they're afraid. It's almost like they're afraid of that effect, whatever that effect may be on their body. And, But I think that just in trying to reach more people, the more loving and accepting we are with everybody and just being like, look, it's just an apple. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the effect and allowing and having faith that they will have a beautiful experience with that food and then continue to just eat healthier. I think that is, is truly an act of faith. But yes, I do believe that food has the power to change our thoughts. Our thoughts become things. And then from there, it is just, it's, it's absolute. They're cleansing foods. They're juicy foods. Our bodies are like juicers, right? We start chewing and absorbing in our mouth. All of the juices get taken all over our body, all those vitamins and minerals are absorbed, and we poop out the fiber, 
right? So <laughs> our bodies are amazing things. And just as our bodies know how to process that, our thoughts will process them too. And as our bodies become cleaner, our thoughts become cleaner. And our whole spirit becomes, I guess, a little bit more pure, step by step. And I do believe that the foods are important. And even if people ask me, well, how did they get started? Even then, sometimes it may not be just going 100% raw at the time, but it may just be, why don't you start by taking out this and this and this and slowly working from there? Because just by eliminating certain things like meat or dairy can seriously create like a huge cloud of like lift out of your brain and it just, it creates clarity. So, yes. <laughs> so, yes. Now, there's definitely truth to that, and you know, and to to what you were saying earlier, Nate. Um, you know, a lot of the, at the most basic level, a lot of food that people eat that it, that you would term as heavy is actually a chemical quagmire of oils and cooking and a whole lot of other processes mm -hmm. uh, that are heavy unto themselves and very difficult to digest. So at, at that level, but even at a cellular level. Um, you know, we operate in a space-time continuum and energy is moving through us all the time. And the more blockage you have, the more resistance you create uh, unto your own being and the more difficult it is to function. So actually, this assists in the aging process. This assists in, a, in essentially being in a position where your field is, in essence, vibrating at a frequency that resonates more with what you were describing as negative thoughts or perhaps more simply remedial thoughts or lower chakra activity as some people might assess it to be. Um, I mean there's a reason why fasting has been a part of most ancient cultures. Um, it, it, it operates as a process that creates epiphany and moments of clarity by virtually allowing the body to cleanse and heal itself uh, because it's not tasked with the with the with the uh, the job of having to digest the food, which is a huge encumbrance. So, in food that's cleaner and pure and ha more high vibrational, uh, that process is is naturally much more easy to to reach in terms of assimilation of the food and uh, having the body operate more optimally. And I, I like what you say there because it brings a little bit. It brings light to the fact that our thoughts can be just as powerful as the food we eat. If our thoughts are toxic and negative, that can also affect our body even if we are eating the purest diet in the world. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's also it's a hand in hand because if you are eating the most pure raw diet in the whole world, you will have to deal with your thoughts because your thoughts will be coming to life. Those skeletons will be coming out of your closet. Um, but I, I think that all in all they make a great team because if you are eating healthy, then you are working hopefully at cleansing your thoughts. However, if you do have toxic thoughts, that, that can be just as powerful as eating toxic foods. So I think going back to what Marcus said, it's not just about the food. It's about the full spectrum of health. It's about truly learning how to incorporate them all. And that's where all of us come in is that we all have you know our different strengths and getting to unite all of these aspects. And I think everybody's opinion is just so exciting to listen to. Well, right now we were discussing there's thoughts and then there's food and they can affect each other. Um, what if it's the same thing? What What is food? Why do we eat? We eat because we want energy. We want to feel good, right? Have you ever noticed that sometimes you eat a heavy meal and then you just, like you said, you want to pass out and then there's days where you haven't eaten for since yesterday, but you have more energy than ever before, or somebody walks in and gives you a hug, so tells you they love you, and then suddenly you have four times the energy than you had a second ago. Well, you didn't eat anything, did you? You didn't put anything in your mouth, so where did all this energy come from? So I think the question should be kind of restated as to what is real raw food. The real raw food of life is life itself. And if it grows on a tree or a bush, that's part of it. But I think somebody looking you in the eye and telling you they love you or hugging you or you having success in life, that's just as much food as an apple or a piece of celery. 
And that to me is the real raw food. It's, if it's natural, if it's real, if it's based in the truth, um, because there is no separateness. It's not like thoughts over here, food <clears throat> here. For me, it's all the same thing. And um, you can choose whichever glasses you want to look through to focus on, but um, once you start seeing everything as the same thing, and um, there is no real, there actually is no food. It's just, there just is everything, and it's connected. And, um, and that's when you don't have to uh, worry anymore about, oh, gee, it's 3 o'clock, I have to eat, or I'm, I'm, right. I, I'm tired, I guess i got to eat. No, if you're tired and run down, have a really good look as to why you're tired and run down. What are you in denial of? What are you lacking? It's not an apple. It's something else. And that's really the big picture for me. That's the real raw food of life. It's, 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 it's the lifestyle itself. It's the way you look at life. You, you, you eat with your, your mind, your eyes, your ears, your 10,000 nerve endings. Um, it's, that's what you eat with. And um, I get this all the time. People say, well, what do I take for diabetes? What do I take to get rid of this disease or that disease? Like, like you're some magic herb that's going to get rid of something, you know? Mm -hmm. The answer isn't what do you put in your mouth? Like, like what Band-Aid do I put on the problem? The answer is usually what do you get rid of? What do you stop doing? What, what is the negative crap that you're hanging on to? What fears, what, what relationship issues, whatever. So the real food is, and this is part of the raw food lifestyle, is to cleanse, right? So I take it to the next level. I say, well, you know, if you really want to feel better, if you really want to heal, you need to do some cleansing on, on, on all levels. Otherwise, the food's not going to do you any good. There's raw food that's dropping dead at 70, and there's drinkers and smokers that live to be 100. So obviously, it's, there's more to it than that. And that's kind of where I'm, I'm like there giving people like an electric jolt in the, in the butt saying, okay, you're not going to be comfortable where you are. Stop, stop with your cashew cheesecakes because there's you got to go to the you got to keep going that's not the end of it that's not right. the final stop you know <laughs> that's a very valid point I think that that's right on and, and you know if you if you really look at what that means you know it has a lot to do with the interpretation of where we where we are as being and where our consciousness emanates from and most people are caught up in their head we're taught that our brain is who we are, but the reality is, is that our heart consciousness is the basis of our existence. And it's understanding that living through the heart creates the, the mindset and creates the reality that Marcus is describing. Yeah, you know, food is a part of it, but there's a whole lot of other things. Everything that you encounter in this existence and your purpose and intention and your path, your servitude to others, whatever the things that you are doing, all contribute to who you are as a being and will determine what your life is going to be like and in essence it becomes less about you and more about what you're about and what you're about and how that extends itself into community and creates happiness is the happiness that you'll find in your reality and that will determine your health that'll determine your longevity all of those things will happen quite naturally in assistance to that right I agree Marcus, what do you think about Brarianism? You think that some of the happiest people is very little. Or is that something you aspire to have time? Or you're, you're, cutting out, you're cutting out, Laura. What, um, can you try again slower? Well, I, I can try and answer. <laughs> <laughs> Asking Marcus about his thoughts on Brarianism. On what an ism? I just heard ism. Breatharianism. Breatharianism. Ah. Oh. Okay, that, that's what I thought. That's what I thought you said. My friend Matt actually did that. Um, he didn't eat for four months, and um, he actually took a picture after four and a half months, where a friend of his, ours, was breaking up their backyard, uh, and he was holding this like. 100 pound cement chunk in his hands. He was skinny, but I mean, he was strong. He was vital. Now, here's, here's the trick, and here's what people don't understand. You can't just jump to that. You no. have to be really, really pure and clean. You got to be basically pure energy at that point. Otherwise, you're going to die. 
You know, um, you can't just go from kindergarten to, to university. Mm -hmm. that, that's all, absolutely true. Yeah, doing all this stuff in between. It, I mean, everything in the universe is energy. We already know that. Um, but you got to learn to ride the horse and, and control it. You, you can't... Um, there, there, there are no shortcuts in life, and everybody's always looking for a shortcut. Um, and it's human nature to, and this is in the raw food world too, everybody tries to see what they can get away with. We're always at the very edge of like, okay, well, because you know, we're pioneers. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing to cheat, because that's part of our nature is to see how far we can push the envelope. And, um, and that's really how progress is made, is by people cheating. We're always looking for shortcuts. Uh, but in the long run, if I can kind of counter what I just said, there are no shortcuts. You have to, you have to pay the dues. You have to walk the walk. You have to, um, you know. Yeah, you can take an airplane, but somebody had to invent the airplane. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of work involved between going from here to here. And uh, I forget what the question was. <laughs> it was about preferentism. Preferentism. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it. It definitely is. Is there's maybe. I can count the people in the world on my left hand that are able to do that because you got to be totally pure and uh, it's got to be you got to be totally committed. I mean, that's literally jumping off a cliff and hoping you're not going to splat because um, that 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 you have to be really, 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 really clean and um, fearless at that point. And if you have one ounce of fear, one thought, one what if. You're 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 dead. You gotta be, you gotta be completely, one hundred percent light, pretty much at that point. But it's totally it's totally possible. It's happening. People are it's doing doable. it. It's doable. It's doable, Laura. You know, there there was a breatharian living here in Sedona, and he had been practicing it for eight or nine years. And the only thing he consumed was water and a small amount of herbal tea. And I can verify, having been around him enough, that I know he was legit, but even just to look at this individual, you understood the path that it took for him to get there. And actually where he ultimately resides as a breatharian kind of removes him from the constructs of a lot of social interaction because he doesn't have a common resonance point with a lot of people who eat food. It's very, very unusual. But the thing is that's really interesting about it is that the process of it is really learning and understanding and being able to actually see quantum physics at work and understanding geometry, being able to see in a, a, a cosahedron, dodectrohedron, being able to look at things and see a fractalization. And this visualization of being able to draw prana from the sun this way is a process that took him 15 years to get to but you know he slowly reduced from like a raw food diet uh, over the course of years and and began a process of elimination and then went into total juicing and so on and so on until he finally got to this point but he was around town here for a number of years and oddly he worked in a restaurant which I thought was the <laughs> strangest thing but he was a practicing breatharian and yeah, he was super thin as, as Marcus described, but you know, there was a certain level of clarity that you could see in this individual that was really unprecedented because he was really, his whole body was devoid of the need of processing stuff. Even, I mean, even the best food we get today is cultivated at a time where we're living in an era of demineralization of soil. Uh, we've got radiation, we've got all manner of things in our environment, and he's just simply subjected to less of it uh, as a result of it. So are we by virtue of what we choose to eat and not eat, so it's on a spectrum. He's just on an extreme level of the spectrum. <laughs> well, the, the answer, I mean, is, is contained in that statement. Um, he, he ate less and less, he, uh, the cleaner he got, and... Um, that's really the answer. The higher you want to go, the more you have to lighten your load. It's, it's, the, it's the law of aerodynamics. Every balloon and airplane and ship person can tell you the same thing. If you start sinking in life, you got to get rid of something. You got to throw something overboard. You got to lighten your load. And if you want to get higher spiritually in, or in, in, in any area, in relationships and finances and success, you got to lighten your load. Um, I know a lot of rich people and they don't have a lot of baggage and um, 
and I don't just mean rich money. I mean like really, really up there, where where everybody else is just way just, swim, just squirming like worms down there. Um, success in life, real health. Um, you don't need a lot. As a matter of fact, you hardly need anything. You don't need other people. You don't need people to tell you that you're beautiful or affirm anything to you. Or you don't need money. You don't need anything. Your clothing. I mean, I learned that when I was in the desert, naked for 40 days. I, I was like, that was the most alive I ever was, and I didn't even have an identity. You know, nobody, the animals didn't know who I was. But just letting go, that's really the secret to getting anywhere. Is just look around and say, what can I dump today? <laughs> what, what do you think of all that, Chris? I think it is all beautiful. And I'm also thinking about reaching people. Um, I was a calculus tutor for five years in college. That's how I made my living. And I remember sometimes trying to communicate with people and tell them, oh, well, it's so easy. The equation is just this, you know, and I'd look at it. And to me, it would make perfect sense. It would be beautifully formulated. I could write it out all beautiful, dot my I's, cross my T's, whatever it may be. And that same person would look at the formula and they'd be like, Christina, I just don't get it. And so when I'm thinking about like all the beautiful things that we're saying here, I'm trying to think about well, what is the average person going to hear if we're going to actually reach people. You know, when talking about Therianism and all this, are they going to feel scared when they feel it, when they when they hear about it? Are they going to feel so disconnected, like the wealthy people that you deal with up here, Marcus, and then the people who are down here, how do we get them to hear our message? How do we get them to, to jump in without feeling like they're about to fall off a cliff? Because we don't want people to feel. You have to speak to them in a language that they understand, and you don't talk about breatharianism. You don't talk about the super rich. You, you, you say, I know what it's like to be you. I've had relationship issues. I've lost my money. I've lost my house. I know what it's like. I've been there. And once you, because th that's the only time they're going to take you seriously and listen to you is if you are one of them. Um, and then once they've accepted you into their world, then you can show them a door or a, a light, a window, and say, hey, now check this out. This is kind of cool. And... Um, and that's how you do it. You kind of just take their hand and walk them through a doorway. And they have to trust you first. And then once you do it, you have to prove to them that what you're saying actually works. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to do anything. You have to, you have to show them that, that you know, the, the before and after, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Yes. Starting simple, making it safe for them. I guess is, is a good word to use, making it safe so that they feel safe to take the next steps. Yeah, right. There are other points to that too where people need to realize the processes and, and way society functions at the moment is not a sustainable world. Uh, you know, coming to terms and recognizing the fact that each of us have to be responsible for finding solutions out of the situations that we're in that we can't sit back and wait for somebody else to take deliberate steps and we simply follow like sheep, uh, you know, that's, that's not going to work, that we have to participate in that process. So coming to terms and recognizing that it's a planet of people that need to serve each other in a cooperative sense is a big step that people have to take in terms of their perception uh, of a non-hierarchical future that doesn't have people in servitude or in a usury system or in some other type of function that's simply designed to serve the interests uh, of an infrastructure, particularly one that's not sustainable, it's crumbling and it's falling apart. A lot of people are living within the context of those parameters today, don't understand what's actually happening around them. They're not actually bearing witness to what these consequences are and what this really means. And, that, and that's an initial first step. They're willing to learn or understand alternatives if they understand that their choices for not learning them are going to be uh, you know, a lot more detrimental in the, in the 
longer term. So does that mean a, an entire collapse has to happen before that happens? It's, there's a pretty good possibility that that's the case. Well, I, I actually, um, my approach is a little different. I spoke to some infomercial people, and they, they've actually done media testing as to what people respond to. You know, we have a bunch of audience members, and that, they, they respond to certain things but not others. Well, one of the things that they don't respond to very much is let's all save the world. Let's get together and help each other. And, 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 and this is kind of a, it, it's a hard truth, but most of the normal people out there, they don't care about saving the world. They don't care about global warming and, and, and you know, eat, eating right stuff. What they care about is feeling good for the next four hours or how are they going to pay their bills. And, and you know, it's basically, I hate to say it, they're selfish. They care about themselves and their own problems. Because they're so buried in their own problems that they don't have any energy left to really give a care about anybody else out there. So my approach is, all right, then let me show you how to, because that's kind of the problem of the world. We keep depending, we keep waiting for other people to save us. The bank, the, the natural healers, the whatever it is, you know, what herb do I take? To, you know, everybody's looking for someone else outside of themselves for an answer, for money, for health, whatever, relationship issues. Um, so my thing is, all right, well, let me show you how you can totally exist without ever needing anybody ever again for anything. And you can be totally happy and free no matter what happens to the world. If the economy collapses, no big deal. Um, it starts with you being okay with yourself and being totally independent, self-empowered, where you don't need a mate, you don't need a government, you don't need money, you don't need a grocery store, a restaurant, anything. That's where it starts. You got to find yourself first. And then once you've healed yourself, now you're worth something to those around you and they start healing themselves. So it actually, my goal is to, okay, let's just, again, revert back to zero where you start from scratch. Get reborn. Start from zero, a naked baby, because uh, you had everything you needed when you were born, um, and you got to get back to that. And that's kind of my approach: is all right. Let's heal you. Let's heal ourselves first, one at a time. And once we find that confidence in ourselves, that we, you know, once you realize that dandelions are edible and that weeds are actually the best food and medicine there is, um, you realize you're never going to starve. So the, who cares what the economy? Has? what happens, you know? Uh, so that's kind of my approach is to get back to right to the very beginning, the way nature designed us is uh, um, take away the house, the clothes, the money, the car, everything. Just plop me in a piece of something where there's a weed growing out of the crack. I'll eat it and I'll be healthy. <laughs> and once you realize that, you know, the rest of the world just kind of grows from that. Uh, so, so are you are you telling me that I, I can't depend on the government? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with everything you're saying, Marcus, and but I ultimately also believe that there has to be uh, an infrastructure of tribe within people at community levels and so forth. And well, and I think will, we'll get that, to that. That will happen, but a tribe of lost people who are just running into each other isn't going to do any good. My point is, once you have, it starts with one person who has their act together. Right. Together with another person who has their act together, and now you've got a team that can start running things. Now, I'm saying, a tribe to me is a bunch of people who are able to support each other, who are able to help each other. Because right now, we've got a bunch of people running around like zombies, not knowing really nobody knows who to ask where to trust you know exactly so I'm saying shut all of it out stop listening yes. to people yes I agree turn it off <laughs> I think that, and I think that goes right back to getting back to the importance and the beauty and simplicity sometimes the things that are the most powerful the things that are right in front of us and they're the easiest to do and that's why I I, I think it goes it goes back to creating a food system. Just like in the cooperative, we try and get people to come and buy organic produce because that money goes right back into the land. It goes right back into the most simple things. If our infrastructure totally crashes, we've invested in our soil to keep us alive. We are investing in the people around us that we know to keep our communities sustainable. So at this point, 
it's getting everybody to come together as a cooperative community to invest in the things that mean a lot to them, to become our own support team, to eat beautiful foods together, to share powerful thoughts, to cleanse our bodies together. That way we are totally sustainable and together we can create order. And I think that's it's such a powerful and beautiful vision. So it's really you know, investing our hearts, our souls, our dollar in whatever it is we want to see happen. Wherever we want to see change is investing where we put ourselves. Obviously, if we're going to go to a department store and buy, you know, faux fox furs and a bunch of, you know, Subway's, you know, I don't know, Pizza Hut on the side or whatever it may be, that's where we are investing ourselves. So in getting people to to go back to their simple roots, it's, I, I I agree with with both with both you said the answer sometimes is right in front of us and it's it's just the most it's the most simple where do you want to see yourself in a year from now how do you want to see our society come together and can we part, can we all participate in making that happen together how will that happen so well, yeah yeah the the underlying theme that I hear is responsibility and bringing that responsibility back into our individual uh, experience. And the word that I um, correlate with that is self-reliance and bringing forth um, our, an our ancient wisdom from our ancestors of being self-reliant. And self-reliance to me means not only dependent only on yourself for your food and for your... Um, you know, spiritual understanding and for your interconnection, but in everything, in, in your relationship with the planet. And so when we are self-reliant, meaning that we are totally comfortable with who and what we are and we can live on this planet without depending on anybody else for anything, then in that moment we are truly complete and we can go out and give our gifts to the world. Until then, we're still a lot of great people with wonderful ideas sharing beautiful messages yet it's really all about you know walking walking our walk and I think that's the next level of where we're really going the next level of where this conversation is going with the Raw Living Expo and with what each of you are doing in your own beautiful ways is not only sharing the message but truly walking the walk and getting to that next level of true sustainability true harmony with the planet and true self-reliance. Like my hat, by the way? Very much. You Thanks. know, I was just about to say that I'm getting a little jealous. <laughs> this one sits me pretty good. <laughs> nice. So yes, I think we're coming yes. down to we're coming down to the last five minutes or so here. Um, do you mind if I ask a, a question? I just want to kind of hear from all of you guys. What are you the most excited about for this event? Like, what do you plan to bring to the table? What are you hoping that other people bring to the table? What is it that truly makes you excited to come to this event? I, want, I really want to see people get excited for it, and so I really want to see what they're excited about as well. well what excites okay. me? Go ahead, Marcus. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, what excites me always, and it's never changed, is the truth. I mean, I get most excited when somebody is, has the guts to look in my eyes and tell me the truth, no matter how painful it is. Um, that's exciting. I would rather get that than somebody telling me something fluffy that makes me feel, you know, that's supposed to make me feel bad. It's when somebody has the courage to not tell you what they think you want to hear, but they're just totally naked front of you, you know, their, their soul. And that to me is the best food that I could ever eat, is that, that kind of, and that, that to me is real food. Soul food. Soul food. <laughs> we, have, we have set up, uh, can you guys? No, you're still cutting out, Laura. Uh, you, might, you might want to try another location. Okay, I, can you hear me? No, not really. Okay, you guys, yeah, I'll just listen. There we go. Try, try, try and go ahead. Okay. Um, so, what we have at the expo, 
to address that issue of, of that more communion rather than just listening to somebody. We'll have the first on the stage, but we also have set up a whole stage just for discussion groups where somebody will be facilitating, as Christina, Marcus, the conversation. I don't think Marcus isn't, but Christina is. And um, where people can really interact and tell the truth and share and ask questions, safe space to really get their questions answered or to even just to express themselves and where they're at and what kind of help they might need, you know, to take it all to the next level. I think that's really important. I agree. Okay, well, I'd like to add to that what, you know, I, I've been involved in this from the beginning and have had sort of underlying purpose and intention for this event um, in terms of my own perspective, and Laura and I have discussed this a lot from the very beginning. Um, essentially, you know, all the exuberance and all of the things that bring the community together, it hasn't been together for a while, all of that's wonderful. Um, but from my view, if we can come away from this event with a series of action items, that open up the doors and opportunities for furthering information on things about GMOs and various other things that are out there that need to have a broader audience. Uh, we talked at one point a little bit, I think it might have been Marcus that mentioned preaching to the choir. Uh, that really need, We need to be able to get the message out there in a variety of ways. We need to find ways collectively to work as a community to create models for cooperative business that can be represented and shown to other people as successful modalities of creating ways to do things in a new order of thinking. So um, certainly the all of the raw materials are there for this, that you know there are things that we can do and come out of this event and use it as the catalyst for growing in a lot of different ways. Or it can be a party, you know, and it'd be wonderful if we can get both of those things to happen um, and not just have one or the other. So from my perspective, I, I you know, those are the things that I've wanted to see from the beginning and continue to hold space uh, in hopes that we are able to accomplish some of that and have some um, legitimate agendas coming out of it. Well, I just want to yes, the party with purpose, the party energy helps us activate. And can you guys see, by the way? Can you hear okay? A little bit, yeah. Keep going. We're, we're making okay. sense of it. And... Um, and so that, that heart energy and that party energy and that communion brings us together with lots and lots of, of energy, spiritual energy, emotional energy. And then it actually, like Michael is saying, can bridge that with into visualizations for action out into the world with us. Then we're really doing a purpose because it is a heart energy that lightens the load, it lightens it up, and it makes the 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 burden, shall we say, of the collective work that we have to do on the planet to lift things up to the next level. And that truly really is the core divine purpose behind the event, absolutely, is to come together and help us to then move into the world to each of our, you know, might work and whatever that is, whether it's just a better uh, raw going out and starting a nonprofit or, you know, whatever it is each one is called to do. We, want to empower everyone in that regard for sure. So I just want to remark upon the schedule which is up now on the website at Raw Living. There's a tab in the menu bar for schedule and you will see there is a truly robust offering of workshops and speakers and discussion groups and chef mos and dance parties uh, to choose from and you can even use an app. You can get an app for your eye, if you have one of the devices, you can get an app for that to make it easy for you to pick and choose in advance those parts of the event that you want to enjoy to you can make the most out of it. Awesome. You were cutting out a little bit, Laura, but basically just to recap for everybody watching this, there is a the schedule is complete and it's on the website at rawlivingexpo.com. You can get it on your iPhone or your smart device. And you can see all the incredible things that are happening. Um, Christina, I wanted to say that to answer your question, why I'm so excited about this event is because it's, it's basically reaching people. It has the potential to reach people in a way that may have never been done before like this. And what I mean by that is 
It's being live streamed across 3,000 websites. It's syndicated on, on the 3,000 top NGO websites around the world. So basically, you know, this message, this information that's being presented by all of you and everybody else at the expo is, is potentially can reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And so that excites me because, you know, part of my life purpose is really helping spread more consciousness with the planet. But for the people watching this, um, and as Marcus said, not everybody's totally interested in that, and that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, what's exciting for the people watching this and who are attending and who are considering attending is all of the incredible experiences you're going to have at the expo. You know, you're going to be able to enjoy fresh and delicious raw food dishes by basically connecting with, you know, leading industry uh, speakers, celebrity chefs, everybody in between. You're going to just basically experience, you know, really an unforgettable weekend. And, you know, the DJs and the dance parties and, and the music and, most importantly, the relationships you're going to walk away with after this weekend. And on top of that, the information, the, the conscious vibration that you may have the opportunity to expand to while you're in the presence of all of this magnificence is just, you know, incalculable. So that's why I'm excited, and um, I'm excited all of you are going to be there, and I'm excited to meeting everybody in person. And maybe we can let everybody maybe just share a last word as well as how people can find out more about what you're doing, your website, things like that. Uh, before we wrap it up here, Christina, you wanna you wanna sure. lead the talk again? They can. Um, so I, I have two websites, but the one that they can find out more about me is just fullyraw.com, and from there they can connect with me on my YouTube channel at Fully Raw Christina, or on my Facebook page at Fully Raw Christina, or on Instagram or Twitter, all at Fully Raw Christina. So. If people want to connect with me um, just for eating raw and get some of my recipes or videos, that's the best way. If they want to learn more about the co-op here in Texas that I run, they can visit that at rawfullyorganic.com. So rawfullyorganic.com, and they can connect through the social media from that website as well. Very cool. Very cool. Any last words, uh, Marcus, you'd like to share about anything? Oh. Um, why, yes, you can learn more about me at marcusnews.com. That's M A R K News dot com. <laughs> hey, that sounds like you had some infomercial practice there. <laughs> Back in the day, huh? <laughs> I've been in I may have to work on my voice. I, I don't know how I would do that one, but I think I could get it. I don't know. <laughs> Marcus will cook you at, at Royal Expo. Marcus, can you train me? <laughs> You don't want to be doing that. I don't want to carry that either. People, you know, I prefer this look. If most people, this is what I'll just do. I'll let that speak for itself. And we'll post we'll post website links uh, below the video so everybody can get in touch with you guys because I think that's also important is for you know, everybody watching this to reach out to you know the speakers here today and and make the connections and and you know if you have questions or get connected to what they're doing because you know they're expanding this on just a, a much more profound level that you can really get involved with a lot more of the things that everybody here is really doing and Michael your website is um, what's well, your website? You, can, you can find it earth and the next society dot com earth's next music dot com we've got a, a large presence on Facebook, which represents a news feed of alternative news for uh, conscious matters and subjects. That's a big part of what we do. Um, we're a signed act on Blue Pie Records out of Australia, so you can find us on their stuff. If you Google Earth in the Next Society, you'll find pretty much everything you need to know. Um, and, and there's quite a bit out there. We've got a live album that's been out for about a year, um, and we're in the process of working on another album now, which will be out in the spring. Beautiful. Michael, I, I know we didn't talk about this, but would you, I know, I see you're in your studio. How mm -hmm. long would it take you to maybe play something for us? A little bit too long with an unprepared type of scenario <laughs> there, Nate. You could you know, have done you, some you have justice to that by giving me a little notice. You, you, know, you know how we roll. It's, you know, we just kind of go with the flow of things, so I thought I'd ask. I was going to ask you earlier, but we got all caught up in all this deep 
intellectual philosophical talk, so I kind of lost. Well, right. Michael is one of the. Uh, Totally unfinished tracks. They're in the middle of being tracked. We're laying keyboard tracks down today, so that's not on there yet. A lot of other stuff's not on there yet as well. I feel it in the air. Change is everywhere. It's easy to see what's going on. I've been on the lies. Now we realize. You don't have to worry, it's all over, baby. I'm falling apart and breaking down. Cause everybody knows, it ain't nothing but a cheap one. Nice. He's one of the best anyway. players I've ever seen. Play. He's also an unbelievable sound engine, like just crazy. It's going to be amazing to have him at the helm of the music program and to see him play on Friday night. Beautiful. Well, thank you all so much. I am truly honored to be sharing this space and time with all of you and, and looking forward to taking this conversation further at the Raw Living Expo. Laura, any final words before we, uh, before we close it down here? Well, yeah. Just, um, when you go to the website, if you have questions, please feel free to email us at connect at rawfoods.com. And also, voting is still live for the Best of Raw Awards. We've fixed a few of voting glitches. If anyone was having trouble logging in, we removed that function together. So that should make for a bit of a smooth voting experience. So please and vote for your favorite raw foods, people, places, products, media, and initiatives. We have about 55 categories. So we can celebrate those people at the Raw Living Expo in the award ceremony on Saturday night and Friday night at the so we are having the awards dinner gala where we have singing air and witchy multi-core raw vegan gourmet meal prepared by Jeff of the Hilton under the tutelage of Elaine Love, Amy Shannon, and Brian B. Live. And uh, it's just going to be an exceptional evening. So those are you can buy your um, weekend ticket and your dinner ticket separately, or you might of the lucky ones to grab one of the very, very few remaining VIP tickets that includes both. So we very much look forward to seeing you there and be in touch with us any questions. And thank you everybody. It's just been great to come in with you very high beings of uh, love. I appreciate appreciate uh, coming with you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I just want to say that this has been so wonderful. I can't wait to meet all of you in person and I'm honored to be here with all of you. Thank you. That wasn't me. <laughs> all right. Cheers, cheers and blessings, everybody. We'll see you soon. Please share this video on Facebook. Share it with your friends and family. Share it with your neighbor. Heck, share it with your dog. I don't care. Let's get everybody at the expo. Get your tickets. We'll see you there. Sedona, February 22nd through 24th. Peace and love. Raw food. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.